In this paper, we present semi-supervised learning approach for large baseline homography estimation based on a progressive estimation strategy. Traditional methods usually adopt feature extraction and matching approaches to obtain matched key points and subsequently solve direct linear transform without layer removal to obtain a homography matrix. However, these methods are highly dependent on the extracted feature matches and the effectiveness of outlier removal methods, which would fail in scenes that lack sufficient high-quality feature points. The deep learning-based approach learns the homography directly through convolutional neural networks. They can be divided into supervised and unsupervised methods. The former approaches are mainly trained on synthetic datasets that lack realistic scene parallax and dynamic objects, resulting in poor generalization to real-world scenes. The unsupervised ones adopt label-free training strategies that aim to minimize the photometric distance between the warped source images and target images, being better generalized to various scenes. With the assistance of photometric losses, the unsupervised methods perform well in small baseline scenes, where the non-overlap rate between two images is less than 10%. However, in large baseline scenes where the non-overlap rate is between 20% and 50%, the warped source image contains plenty of out-of-boundary pixels due to the large appearance and viewpoint changes, causing it hard to minimize the photometric distance. Here is an example in the low texture scene. The results are aligned by the homography estimated by the traditional method, supervised method, unsupervised method, and our method, respectively. To this end, we propose a progressive estimation strategy to address the large baseline challenge. Specifically, we convert the large baseline problem into multiple intermediate phases by inserting several images along with predefined homographies into the source and target image. The homography between the source image and the target image can be obtained by cumulatively multiplying these intermediate homographies. To achieve this, we design a homography identity loss to optimize our network in a semi-supervised way, which contains a supervised objective and an unsupervised objective. Firstly, given the predefined homographies, the supervised one is utilized to optimize intermediate homographies of inserted images. After that, the unsupervised loss helps to estimate a large baseline homography by minimizing the error between the homography of the source and target image and the accumulative multiplication result of all intermediate items. Overall, our semi-supervised homography identity loss is expressed by combing the supervised and the unsupervised loss. Here shows our network architecture. Firstly, we resize the original two images into lower resolution ones to improve the applicability to high resolution images and use a multi-scale CNN encoder to obtain the pyramid features. After that, the global and local correlation layers take the pyramid features as inputs to calculate the correlation maps to improve the utilization of feature information and expand the receptive field. Then, the calculated correlation maps are fed into the course to find homography estimation module to obtain homography flows and solve DLT to get the corresponding homography matrices. Note that the homography flows just serve as the supervision objects during the training stage due to it. It's non-trivial to directly estimate a homography matrix and our supervised and unsupervised objectives are accordingly converted. To validate our method, a large-scale dataset is proposed, which contains five categories, including regular, low-texture, low-light, large-foreground, and small-foreground. We select 76K image pairs for training and 1.8K image pairs for evaluation and ensure that the non-overlap rate between the source and target images is from 20 per and to 50 percent. Some examples are shown below. For each evaluation image pair, we manually labeled more than six uniform distributed matching points for quantitative comparisons. Some examples are shown below. Here shows our experiments. We compare our method with existing methods on our evaluation set and our method outperforms all the previous methods.
In particular, we achieve points matching error of 5.49 inch the low texture category and 4.11 inch the low light category, which outperforms the second best methods by 66.44% and 53.03% respectively. Overall, our method achieves a 49.90% error reduction compared to the unsupervised method DAG. Here are some qualitative results. The images are generated by superimposing the warped source images on the target image. Error-prone regions are highlighted with red boxes, and the blue boxes show the content difference between the two images in the error-prone regions. As we can see that our method can estimate more accurate homography for alignment and obtain the best visual results. We also provide the GIF version of some visual examples in the challenge scenes. Compared to the traditional methods and the unsupervised methods, our method works better in challenging scenes and can obtain more accurate results. Additionally, we also conduct experiments on the small baseline dataset to verify the effectiveness of our method. As we can see that our method outperforms the existing four deep learning based methods with the error reduced from 0.50 to 0.44. Visualization examples are shown below. Here is our ablation study on our large baseline dataset. Firstly, we choose to vary the number of inserted intermediate images to verify the effectiveness of our progressive estimation strategy as shown in rows 2 and 3. As we can see that inserting more images cannot improve the performance due to the cumulative error would increase. Then, we compare our homography identity loss with the commonly used photometric losses as shown in rows 4 and 5. Optimizing with the photometric loss leads to failure in all scenarios. The ablation-based photometric loss avoids the effect of out-of-boundary pixels, but it is not able to handle scenes with dynamic objects. In addition, we remove the supervised and unsupervised loss respectively for optimization, as shown in rows 6 and 7. The average error of training with supervised loss is higher than that of training with the unsupervised one. Since our supervised objective is constructed based on the synthetic data and is therefore not ideal in terms of generalizability, by combining the advantages of supervised and unsupervised learning, our semi-supervised loss can achieve better results. Finally, we use the homography flow, which is a form of dense offset similar to the commonly used corner offsets in the training phase. Our homography flow contains more motion information and achieves better results as shown in row 8. Another similar form is the 8 basis flow. It performs well in the small baseline scenes but crashes in the large baseline as shown in row 9. Our homography flows represent the global motion of the two images and thus the flows are smooth. While the optical flow method can estimate the local motion of the two images such as the streetlights and the people. To summarize, we propose a progressive estimation strategy to address large baseline homography estimation by transforming the large baseline into several intermediate ones. We propose a semi-supervised homography identity loss that enforces the network to focus on optimizing the homography. We introduce a large-scale dataset for large baseline homography learning. Experiments show that our method outperforms existing methods. Thank you very much.